All right, let's talk about springs. Uh, probably one of my favorite subjects. Um, Florida, we're pretty blessed. We've got wetlands, rivers, lakes, and these crystal clear blue aquifer springs coming up to the surface, uh, that cold 72 degree water. Um, you know, so I thought, all right, let's do a, a video on this and uh, I'll do a quick search. You know, it'd be cool to show you guys a graphic of where all the springs in Florida are. So I type into Google list of springs in Florida and a couple of different websites pop up. One says, you know, there's 900 springs. Another one um, pops up and says there's 700 springs. So, I'm, you know, I'm clicking on those links and it'll give you a couple of the big named springs that we have here in our state, but it's, it's missing a lot that I know are close by or um, that are springs. And so I type in list of all springs in Florida and uh, this Florida Geological Survey pulls up and uh, this is an original report from 1947. It was updated in 1977 and then again as recent as 2004. Um, so it has about 720 springs and so I click on this link and scrolling through the table of contents and I get to Pasco and it says one spring. Crystal Springs. And if you know uh, Zephyr Hills water, that's where the Nestle Corporation gets uh, the water for Zephyr Hills water. Um, so it's a pretty popular spring in our county and uh, rightfully so it should be listed. But I'm like, um, we have an entire state park named Salt Springs State Park. Uh, how are we missing these from this list? You know, so I'm like, all right. Apparently, these lists are just not going to be out there or, you know, most people don't care about the smaller springs. And so I'm like, all right, I'll just uh, email some contacts at SWIFMA, DP, and I'll try USGS. And so I get a couple emails back and I'm, I'm checking them. And first one, it's like, um, we're not aware of any single map that shows all springs in the state of Florida. Um, you might want to check with Swift Mudder DEP. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I did. I'll wait for their responses. And then I get an email back from the DEP, and they're like, um, you might want to check with the Coast Guard, Swift Mud, or with USGS. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of the response I got from the first one. And then finally, I get this uh, response back from the USGS, and they're like, um, you might want to check with the uh, Caribbean Florida Water Science Institute and you know Swift Mud and DEP um, or try a domestic uh, name search and so if you know the name of the spring which I knew a couple um, it might pull it up and so I type in there uh, you know and it's pretty nice it's got um, filters like uh, I could select Pasco County and then I could just do a, a generic name like spring so I figured won't put an S on the end of it. I'll just leave it at spring. And then if something pops up, um, good. I got an, an idea. Well, it generated a bunch of things, but it's like Spring Cemetery and uh, Spring Hill. And uh, there was, again, only a couple springs. Um, I think Crystal Springs and Salt Springs might have been listed on there. Uh, but I knew of other ones. So I knew there was this trouble for finding maps of all of our springs that we have here in the state of Florida. All right, so I had a, a pretty hard time trying to find uh, a map of all the springs in just our general area of Pasco County. Um, like I said, the most complete thing I could find was on the Florida Geological Survey, and I did a little real quick back study. I looked back at the, uh, the 1977 report, and there was like 12 springs listed under Pasco uh, in 77. So. Sometimes this does happen. Springs are thought to be springs. They're really sinks and then or there's collapses and the connection to the water that was flowing there is diminished or cut off. And so um, springs do dry up and Seven Springs is thought not to have flowed since 1960. So uh, this happens. And so, so you think of uh, finding a list of springs is hard. Um, don't even ask what the largest spring in the state of Florida is because apparently there's uh, lots of debate on how to classify springs and how much water is flowing through those springs. And so 
Springs are often classified by the volume of water that discharges, so that seems legit, right? How much water is coming out of this hole in the ground? Uh, we calculate that and um, we figure out how much water is coming. Um, but what usually happens is these are done in spring runs and there might be multiple vents for the same spring, um, or there could be a totally another spring vent that is supplying that river run and therefore uh, it's being calculated as a group of springs instead of a single spring. So there's lots of arguments about that. Um, and uh, so people fight about single springs or groups of springs, which one's the most, uh, has the highest flow. Um, it makes it difficult also to measure submarine springs. These are springs that are found out in the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic. And um, obviously there's no spring run. And so you've got to be able to measure the water that's coming out of that uh, vent. And um, you know, that's, that's pretty challenging in those marine conditions to do so. So there's a little um, lack of information there, not a lot of studying. Like People really don't care about submarine springs. It's the one on shores that they like or up on land that they like the most. Um, so springs are broken into categories. They're listed as single springs. Um, they can be listed as a group of springs. Like I said, same uh, connection to vents or totally different springs that are all contributing to one spring run. Um, you get what's called river rises, um, the Al or not the Alifea, the, uh, the Santa Fe River. It kind of disappears, it goes back into the limestone, and then it emerges as this huge river, twice its size that it was when it went into the rock, uh, several miles uh, downstream. So obviously there's some connection with other um, spring water that's feeding that. And so those are called river rises. Um, and we also get sinks, which sometimes they can pump water. Sometimes they uh, siphon water. And so uh, tidal influence has a big effect on sinks, especially how close they're located towards the shore. Um, there's a couple up by US-19. And at high tide, um, they're more of like a spring. And then at low tide, there's a siphoning of water. And so divers have been in there and said that the pull is pretty intense. Um, but if you're closer to the water and it's actually being submerged under uh, salt water and, uh, from the tides, you get the opposite effect. You're going to get these sinks at high tide, and then you're going to get springs pumping water out at low tide. And so those are sinks. Um, they're also listed whether or not they're onshore or offshore. Again, those submarine springs or land-based springs. There's also debate uh, when the volume recording was done. So was it during the wet season, dry season, drought? Is it during El Nino, La Nina? Um, you know, those time frames have to be questioned. And so different flow rates at different times of the year are gonna be different because of the, the hydrological cycle. Then we're not even done there. Then is it a natural or a man-made spring by maybe a canal being dredged or a limestone quarry pit? Um, there's other problems with identifying springs. Um, their names change. Um, some of them have multiple names. Some of them are um, renamed because they don't like the name. Uh, my favorite is Brett's Toilet Bowl uh, at Warner Boys Salt Spring State Park was changed to just toilet bowl spring. And I was like, come on, look at this spring. This this is a spring? What, are you kidding me? Uh, and then I look at something like Ward Sink and I go, that's not a spring, that's a sink. So common names, there's a lot of springs in the state of Florida that are called Blue Spring, about five of them. And uh, then we've got those salt springs. And there's three different groups of salt springs. There's the one here in Pasco County, but then just 10 miles up the road in Hernando County, we've got another salt spring up there. Uh, and so, uh, you know, those could have been misleading because of their name, or maybe they're accurate. Maybe they're salt water springs or brackish water springs at least. Um, and then there's people that just call sinks springs. And so locals, it gets a name and then kind of sticks. All right, so here's where it gets a little bit more clear, I think. Uh, well, there's either 27 or 33 springs that are considered magnitude one. So um, there's still some debate there. Uh, this is going to be a magnitude one is going to be anything that pumps water that's at a rate of 65 million gallons per day. 
Uh, second magnitude springs are going to be anything under 65 million gallons to about 6.4 million gallons. And then most um, classifications are going to stop around classification three. But uh, we do have other groups that classify them all the way up to a magnitude eight, which is just over a pint of water a day. So um, you can be pretty specific on uh, the magnitude of a spring. All right, so after about a week of trying to find a map, um, I have documented springs here in the state of Florida. The best maps that exist out there are just gonna primarily be your magnitude one and magnitude two springs, and not all of your magnitude two springs are even gonna be on there. Um, springs are either highly classified or people just uh, don't have a map of all of them. So um, I came to the conclusion there's just not a map that shows where all these locations are. So I created a map uh, for Pasco County and I had two criteria. Uh, one, it's a deep hole. And two, it's gotta be connected to our bedrock. And so um, I didn't really care if it was a sinkhole, onshore, offshore, brackish water, fresh water, karst, window, vent, seep, river run, submarine, spring, hole, swallet, cave, or grotto. Uh, some were easier than others when I did find links to them. Some dating back to the 77s was a uh, map that I used. It was like, you go to this dirt road and walk 150 feet down the dirt trail and it's on your right. And uh, some of them would be like, uh, it's at the corner of this road that no longer exists and this road uh, and about 1.7 miles southwest. Um, but some had the coordinates, and so those were nice to be able to show the coordinates and then, you know, I had much smaller area to search to see if I could find where they were, but the other ones were a little bit more challenging. Um, so I hope you enjoy some of the pictures and videos that I've put together of some of our local deep holes uh, that enter our bedrock. I, I don't know what to call them anymore. I um, always thought they were springs if they pumped water, but... Uh, not all springs pump water all the time, so um, and we're going to take a little dive into some of these springs locally here off of the coast of Florida.
All right, so right now I am currently standing on a limestone outcropping. Uh, we call these limestone bridges here, and these were carved by the water here in our state. Um, the average rainfall in the state of Florida is slightly acidic at 5.4. Um, but if you can see directly down here, there's a little shelf. And uh, if I move my kayak out of the way, you can see that shelf. And directly underneath it, water flows, comes out from the Floridan aquifer and uh, or the surface aquifer and then we also have another shelf right over here so water is flowing underneath me through this crop uh outcropping and out of the aquifer we are standing on another limestone outcropping and uh it's kind of more channelized here and so that water flowing from salt springs coming through here especially at low tide uh, <clears throat> the water quality today is not the greatest got some of those tannins in it that gives it that reddish appearance um, but right over here uh, during low tide that water flowing through this spring run comes and there's a little waterfall here and so uh, one of the things that uh, we don't have much of in Pasco County are spring or our waterfalls uh, we do have springs um, but uh, this creates a little tidal waterfall at low tide